Hey everyone, it's Mojax back in the DJ City UK lab. This week's episode is a sequel to one of the most popular episodes I've ever done for DJ City, the review of the Pioneer DJ XDJ RX. And that is because the product itself here is a sequel. This is the XDJ RX2. The question is, as sequels go, is this more Empire Strikes Back or the Matrix Reloaded? Let's find out. The XDJ RX2 is a true all-in-one solution for DJs. It supports playback directly from USB, so no computer is required, and you have two deck sections and a mixer. You can rock up at a gig with just the RX2 and a USB stick, plug the outputs into a sound system, and you're ready to go. It's a fairly sizable beast, at around 29 inches wide, 17 inches deep, and weighing in at around 20 pounds, but for me, that's still in the realms of being portable. In a hard bag or soft case, whatever you want to call it, it's perfectly feasible to carry around in one hand, for sure. I know some DJs have been waiting for a four-channel version of the RX, and I do understand why, but for me, that would push the unit to a size and weight which would be a lot less practical, so I'm good with two channels. The build quality is typical Pioneer DJ and quietly reassuring all round. The company shipped it to me in nothing but a soft case, which indicates their confidence in just how much of a beating the unit can take. Connection-wise, there will be enough here for most people. The RX2 works as a standalone mixer and has phono and line inputs on each channel, as well as an auxiliary input with adjustable gain, which is a nice touch. There's a USB port on the rear, which I'll get to later, master on XLRs and RCAs, and a booth output on balance jacks. There are two mic inputs with jack and XLR combo sockets and shared EQ. Headphone queuing is fully covered with both sizes of jack socket, queue master blend, and there's an option for split queue in the utility menu. One important upgrade with the RX2 is the move to a touchscreen display. That opens up the ability to search for tracks with an on-screen QWERTY keyboard, a huge improvement over the knob controlled system before, which was pretty clunky. It also means you can scrub through the track by touching the waveforms and makes controlling things like setting shortcuts quick and efficient. At a healthy seven inches in size, the screen is clear, bright and crisp, with good viewing angles and decent resolution. When it comes to features on the screen, Pioneer DJ have added most of the cool stuff from the CDJ2000 Nexus 2. One of those, for example, is Track Filter, which lets you display only tracks which are compatible with the currently playing one according to your own custom criteria. The shortcut screen is great too, allowing quick adjustment of the kind of settings you might want to adjust on the fly. There is still the traditional utility menu for other settings as well. Having stacked waveforms for both decks is a real boon for those who are used to having that feature in software. There is one quirk with that, however, which the original RX shared too. That is the way that the waveforms seem to constantly play catch up with one another. It's hard to explain, so hopefully you can see it on the video. It's not really a negative, as the audio of tracks stays locked together. It's purely visual. It even does it when you've got sync active, so it might just be a little bit disconcerting the first time you use the RX2, I just can't see any reason why it does display like that. Having the main scroll knob next to the screen feels a lot more like a CDJ than the central knob on the RX did, and I like it a lot better. And that similarity extends to the deck sections as well. The play and cue buttons, the pitch fader, the loop and memory point controls are all laid out exactly like on a CDJ. If you use an RX2 at home, you will feel immediately comfortable on higher end players in the club. Of course, one difference is the jogs, which are much smaller than those on CDJs and which use capacitive touch rather than mechanical tech. Still though, they feel very nice indeed, with a perfect amount of resistance when scratching and are extremely accurate with zero noticeable latency. I'm always happy to see a position indicator in the middle of static jogs, and I prefer the more pronounced dimples on the side compared to the previous model. Once you're used to the more diminutive size compared to a CDJ, they feel very natural and comfortable to use. Another obvious change from the RX2 is in the pad section. Whereas that had four fairly clicky blue buttons, the RX2 now has eight proper pads, which are RGB illuminated around the edges. They offer four modes, hot cue, beat loop, slip loop, and beat jump. Whilst I do wish they'd done a bit more labeling around them, it can be hard to remember which pad does what in some of those modes, and the RX was strong on that front, there's no doubt they offer a massive functional improvement. The mixer section is a lot like the DJM450 mixer, with a bunch of post-fader beat effects, four color effects with parameter control, plus switchable EQ and isolator modes. 
There are two significant differences from the 450 though. There's a regular crossfader, not a Magvel unit, but I'm okay with that. The cut-in is still tight and it has a good feel. But the lack of a reverse switch will be a deal breaker for some DJs. Anyone who uses their fader hamster style will definitely be disappointed by the RX2. Performance when using USB drives is completely solid, as I would have expected, and it's pretty swift when it comes to browsing and loading when you use decent, fast media, certainly on a par with the Nexus 2 hardware. There is some competition on the market now with some more power under the hood, but it's still plenty usable. Pioneer DJs say the restrictions on number of files has been relaxed now, so you should be able to use big drives with more than 10,000 tracks. One annoyance, the RX2 won't play FLAC or Apple lossless files like the Nexus 2 kit does. There are lossless options available to you, WAV and AIF, but it does restrict your options. There are two USB ports on the top, both of which can be used for playing back files, but the right one has a killer extra feature, mix recording. Like on the original RX, it records to lossless WAV format and has a track mark button for separating out your files. I feel like manufacturers often overlook recording too much, and having an instant one-button record solution is just fantastic. The only thing which would make it even better would be compatibility with Pioneer DJ's DJM Rec iOS app, which would mean you could use the RX2 for easy streaming as well. Although I expect standalone playback will be the thing which will attract most people to the XDJ RX2, the final thing to discuss is how well the unit works with the computer. When connected to record box via the USB port on the rear, you have two options. The first is to use the software in export mode in the same way as you would have done on the original RX over Ethernet. You activate Link, and that enables you to utilize your whole record box library on the computer. It's simple, doesn't put a lot of stress on your laptop, and can be really useful if you're a DJ who just doesn't feel comfortable without your whole music collection to hand. The second option is to put the software into performance mode, and that was not a great experience with the previous model. The RX2 though is superb in what is effectively HID mode. Full waveforms, track browsing and loading from the unit, there's even a special display screen for record box video. That's smart, as performing with video is a solid reason for wanting to carry on using a laptop. It's a little bit counterintuitive that the pad modes don't correlate with the markings on the RX2, but having stuff like the pad effects to hand and pitch play and so on is still very cool. My only disappointment on the computer side of things is that the audio interface in the RX2 doesn't have discrete channel inputs, so you can't use DVS, but that's really the only letdown of what is otherwise a superb controller mode. So there you go, a good look around the XDJ RX2 from Pioneer DJ. Fundamentally, this thing wins on two different counts. Firstly, price. $1,700 street price is not a cheap bit of gear, but if you are looking to get into that Pioneer DJ record box USB stick kind of ecosystem, just playing off USBs, this is the best way to do it. The closest alternative with similar functionality would be the XDJ 700s, which you know, are nice little capable players, but a pair of those and a DJM 450 kind of mixer equivalent, you're talking over $2,000. This thing, $1,700 street price in the US. And the key for why Pioneer budget end stuff is always good is that it just feels like the expensive kit. All their lower end stuff feels like the pro stuff. If you are playing on this at home and then you are going out and playing on Nexus 2 kit in the biggest of clubs, you'll feel right at home because everything kind of performs in a very similar way. Even the buttons are laid out in a similar way. It just, you'll feel instantly at home on any of the higher end Pioneer DJ kit. The second area in which this thing is a winner is in terms of practicality. I know a bunch of DJs who bought the original RX. Some now have got the RX2. The reason that they've gone for that over a regular controller and laptop setup is the practicality of it. If you're playing at venues on a regular basis where they don't have equipment or they have bad equipment, let's say you're playing at hotels where they've got a PA system and a lighting rig, but you are expected to bring your own front end, what could be simpler than rocking up, putting this down, plugging in one power cable, XLRs in the back, that's you set, you know, all ready to go. There's a lot to be said for that practicality and it means you don't have to have an expensive laptop that you keep kind of upgrading and replacing over time. You can use the most basic kind of desktop computer in your house to actually load up your USB media, and there you are, you're ready to rock with your RX2 at any opportunity. 
It is a solid upgrade from the RX. I wouldn't necessarily say that everyone should jump out. If you're happy with the RX, you know, this is not gonna change the world for you, um, but it is a great addition. There's nothing on here they've added or changed, which is not an improvement. Everything's got better as it's gone on. So yeah, it's overall a very solid bit of kit. I liked the original and I like this one too. Thank you for watching today. Do make sure you subscribe for all our future tips, tricks and product reviews. I'll see you soon.